This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce has helped local businesses adapt during the pandemic. We'll talk with the group's president about how they stayed positive and got creative in 2020. Well, there's less than two days left in 2020. How's everyone holding up? I'm Ken Karen. I thank you for spending some time with us now. Let's get to your local information. Governor Tom Wolf announced that the temporary COVID-19 mitigation efforts put in place on December 12th will expire on Monday, January 4th at 8 a.m. So that means the ban on indoor operation for bars, restaurants, gyms, and entertainment venues is lifted and the gathering restrictions of 10 people indoors and 25 outdoors, plus extracurricular activities at school schools can resume. However, all mitigation efforts set before December 12th are still in place, including mask wearing, gathering limits based on venue size, and business capacity limits. It hasn't been an easy year for local businesses, but the Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce has been there for their members every step of the way. Arjanine Lasant takes a look back at how businesses in our area adjusted throughout 2020 as she kicks off her year in review series. Our year in review, we stopped by Schuylkill County today. We are with the president and CEO of the Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce, our good friend, Bob Carl. Bob, nice to see you via Zoom. Always a pleasure, Janine. It's uh, great to be with you. What a year it's been for all of us. A lot of lessons have been learned, but I know at the Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce, you have actually had a very successful 2020. We really have, and I thank and have great gratitude for my tremendous staff, uh, Danielle Lodeman, Samantha Shavinsky, and Kelly Pernetta, who worked by my side day in and day out. It's been challenging with the pandemic, uh, but we've reinvented ourselves and uh, continue to work strongly for our 730 members, which include businesses and nonprofits. And yes, I do believe we had a very successful year as kind of uh, statistically commemorated that we had our best membership retention uh, that we've had in, I believe, the history of the chamber, but certainly in my 12 years of leadership here. Please, if you can tell our viewers, what are some of the things that you did during the pandemic to support those small local businesses and also the nonprofits in Schuylkill County? Well, you begin a year with a plan and we had our plan. And of course that plan all changed in March uh, with the, the pandemic beginning. And at that point we had to obviously shift our focus to the most important priority, which was how do we continue in the pandemic to support our membership and generally all members of the community, whether they be chamber members or not. Uh, our, our shift was immediate and it began with communication. Uh, things were happening so fast that communication through our website, through our chamber newsletter, our communicator, and through our social media presence had to be immediate every day, day in and day out, new releases, new guidelines, new governor mandates, uh, new mitigation strategies. And uh, they could have devastated our businesses and we were, and, and our nonprofits, and we were very aware that the more proactive we were, the more real time we were, uh, and the more assistance we could provide would hopefully help our members get through this. And I think that that's what happened, but it took a Herculean effort to stay up with all the information and get it out very, very timely, literally within the same hour we were getting it, so everybody had time to react and adjust. From talking with business owners and those that run the nonprofit agencies, what were their, or are, I should say, their major concerns moving forward into the new year? Well, where their uh, operations were either closed or temporarily closed, it was that they couldn't conduct business. But then on top of it, a major issue became uh, their employees. And because there was a shutdown at one point, and there was a, an additional benefit put on unemployment compensation. Some businesses and some nonprofits had difficulty 
uh, getting their people back to work even when the governor began to open in June. And so it was not only the actual business or nonprofit operation, it was literally, did they have enough people to get the job done? And if not, how were they going to adjust? The other major issue was, could they conduct their normal business operations or nonprofit operations in the same manner as before the pandemic? Or did they need to reinvent? And in many cases, they needed to reinvent as well. What have you taken away with you in 2020? What have we learned from 2020? And what are you, your plans for 2021? Well, I think that, you know, resiliency. Uh, we always were tough and resilient, but I think we, we are even more resilient than uh, we thought we were. And uh, nobody wants to give up. Nobody wants to lo use, lose their life work, whether it's the Schuylkill Chamber of Commerce in, you know, our, our second century, or it's all these businesses and nonprofits with a great track record and a great history. Nobody wants to give up. The world we live in today is different than before. We're much more virtual, sometimes remote. We still have a very strong commitment to do programming and servicing face-to-face, -face, but we may have to wait a while to be able to do it. We plan to return to normal as quickly as possible, and we're hoping the vaccine and the fortitude of our great members gets us there very early in 2021. And then we'll be back to normal with more skill sets and more ways to serve our members. Today's news feature is brought to you by Feisner's Ford and Freeland, who is celebrating 75 years in business. Give them a call at 570-636-3920, or you can log on to FeistnersFord.com. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. We'll have to be a little cautious getting around on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on New Year's Eve. Snow showers and sleet likely before 7 a.m., then a chance of snow showers between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m., mostly cloudy with highs in the 30s, 60% chance of precipitation on New Year's Eve, then at night it's mostly cloudy with lows in the 20s. On New Year's Day, there's a hazardous weather outlook as freezing rain and sleet may make the roads slippery. On New Year's Day, there's a 90% chance of precipitation, freezing rain and sleet mainly after 1 p.m p.m. will have highs in the 30s. At night, again, a 90% chance of precipitation, freezing rain and sleet before 9 p.m., then rain and sleet between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m., then just rain will have lows in the 30s. Saturday is mostly cloudy with highs in the 40s. Saturday night, a 40% chance of showers after 1 p.m., mostly cloudy with lows near 30. Sunday, there's a 40% chance of snow showers before 1 p.m., mostly cloudy with highs in the 30s, and Sunday night, mostly cloudy with lows in the 20s. Coming up, we have a story with Los Angeles Angels manager Joe Madden and some tips on picking the right college. SBTV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. G. Howard Hatfield Jr., age 82, of drums. Services will be private under the Harmon Funeral Home. Lawrence M. Clemmau, age 76, of Sugarloaf Township. Services were held today under the Fiero Funeral Home. Florence Petrosky, age 98, of Whitehaven. A private mass will be held on Saturday at St. Patrick's Church in Whitehaven. The Lehman Family Funeral Home in Whitehaven is in charge of arrangements. Wendy Mae Thomas, age 47, of Cunningham. The Harmon Funeral Home will announce their arrangements. Jose Ortiz Torres of Hazel Township. Services will be private under the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Mary Zapofsky, age 60. The Damiano Funeral Home is handling arrangements. And Thomas E. Zurich, age 62, of West Hazleton. Services will be private under the Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570 788 or go to harmonfuneral.com. <laughs>